How we doing guys? It's Sam and Alex here with your weekly fishing report. Things are getting heated up out there. Hot. Hot stuff. Hot, it's hot, hot in this hot. room. It's hot out there. Fishing's great. You've been on a trip. You haven't been fishing much, but you've heard about it. Oh yeah, everybody. It's been talking about stuff. You know how it is nowadays. Oh yeah. Talk about it, talk about it. So, talk about it. A lot of stuff going on there. Absolutely. A lot. So why don't you start out with your favorite stuff? I mean, skipping around the skinny water. So, snakehead. Obviously we got snakehead uh, tournament going mm -hmm. on. Uh, bites actually been pretty consistent while I was going. Uh, most of the guys on the western shore were catching them in Patuxent. Patuxent was uh, great. Up in, uh, what you call it, Dundee, uh, Bush River, all mm -hmm. those areas are heating up. A lot of mid-sized fish. Yep. I mean, there was a lot of fish that I saw that were probably like five to six pounds. Uh, a couple big ones out of, uh, you know, some unknown areas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but besides that, if you're fishing the Patuxent, uh, have your spinner baits, have your mm -hmm. chatter baits. White seems to be the color. It rained a little bit, so now you want to go with the black and blues. We have a little uh, little example here of what you need for most of these areas. Some topwater frogs, inline spinners, so you don't get snagged every other cast, chatterbaits, high techs, and some inlines. Some black water uh, area, the bike picked up good for some guys. Uh, it's hit or miss, guys. Remember that. You, you know, not every day is a great day out there. Absolutely. Uh, that's what you got to be out there. You ain't going to catch them from the couch. Um, other than that, Blackwater had some good fish in mm -hmm. like the mid, uh, you know, eight to you know ten pound range, and some of those uh, going up to eleven. I even saw like a twelve, thirteen pounder. Wow! Uh, I guess he wasn't in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides that, shad fishing is the other option. Shad fishing. It's yeah. been really, really hot on shad fishing. Mm -hmm. This is the time to get out there for it. We're starting to see a few on the east side, but as far as the western side, that's where it's been oh, yeah. really, really good. Mm -hmm. You're in classic places like Fletcher's areas like that. Um, and as far as baits go, and the cool thing about shad fishing is you can fish a, a multitude of different things. It's really hard to beat a classic shad dart tandem. Mm -hmm. Now, you are going to want to add a little bit of weight to this stuff if you're fishing in some of those west side areas that are kind of deeper, just to right. help you get down a little bit. The shad dart tandems are always going to be good for you. One of my favorites is these little cast masters. I think they're kind oh, of hard to beat. Are awesome. But a little shop favorite and kind of one not too many people know about are these glow shot jigs from North One Tackle. Whether or not you had to put the piece of glow in there or not, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just worried about the color of these baits. They have so much flash. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is you get a small package bait with a small hook, but it's still heavy. Yeah. So you can get down without having to use these bigger profiles you would usually have to use. And that's perfect for like Fletcher's where it's deep, uh -huh. uh, fast exactly. current. Uh, that's great for that area if you're fishing in shallow in a couple of the eastern shore creeks like Red Bridges, yeah. Tuckahoe, all that, and where you're using the lighter stuff uh, like that. Those will work great, but I mean, you can also make tandems out of them. I mm -hmm. usually, my typical yeah. thing is making a tandem out of the 1 8 uh, cast master and put a 1 8 shaft dart on the front. That way you have you know added weight, small profiles, so count it down to get it down deep if you need to. Uh, and then just play around with the colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Have a different colors because shad can be like that where in certain yeah, areas it can, it can get finicky. finicky. Yeah, For sure. Um, another thing that's happening is flounder fishing and all of your like that's you your know, back bay thing. stuff. I love flounder fishing. I'm excited to get out there next week for it. Um, fishing areas like Assateague, mm -hmm. Chicoteague, Delaware, even the mouth of the bay, you're having these fish come in and they're pushing up shallow a lot mm -hmm. this time of year, especially in this early April, May. We're seeing quite a few of them around that Assateague area, but you don't want to shy away from Ocean City this time of mm -hmm. year too, because Ocean City can be really tough to fish in the summer months. It gets hot and then there's about 2 million boats. Oh yeah. But if you go down there now, you've still got a really good opportunity and the pressure is way down. And as far as what you're fishing, this here is our little sea bass and flounder uh, jigging setup. And this just comes with a nice little four or five aught octopus hook. And then you got about a 12 inch shot with a loop at the bottom where you go ahead and throw on a bucktail. Slide that on. And you're gonna wanna tip this. Uh, you can tip them with a strip of bluefish if you find mm -hmm. some of that, but, but really classic, it's just a, a gulp. They're really hard to beat for flounder fishing. And as far as colors and stuff go, um, you know, it's hard to beat white and sartreuse. But this time of the year, especially because we're going to be fishing those shallow water areas, when they're pushing up into the islands, the marshes, they're eating a lot of crabs and shrimp. So it's always going to have a few shrimp profiles with you, too, besides your classic twister, twister tails and straight yeah. tails. A lot of times they'll hit the teaser a lot more oh, than yeah. the actual bucktail just because it's, I guess, off the bottom mm -hmm. a little bit. Exactly. Uh, but, and Semi-Tree makes these things here, so... <laughs> So, 
You're not always going to find them though in the deeper water where you'd be using this. I shouldn't say deep, you know, anywhere from, mm -hmm. you know, eight feet or deeper, I could still be fishing this rig. But when you have those high flood tides or just really any high tide, a lot of these fish are going to be pushing up into the mouths of those little creeks in the islands of place like Watch yeah. Creek, Assateague. And in that, you don't need much of anything heavy. These are just little quarter ounce um, GI jigs. Throw a gulp on there, bounce it along the bottom in those shallows, and, and that's oh, kind of starting to be easy. You'll yeah. tear them up. So, now, there, so there's plenty of fishing going on. Oh yeah, now you also got your catfish. Catfish. You know, blue catfish all, all around the area. Mm -hmm. uh, remember tides are really important with those too. Absolutely. Uh, they're just not just out there all the time. Uh, flatheads up in the Potomac, flatheads up in the uh, underneath Puerto Mingo Dam. Mm -hmm. uh, get some live bluegills, throw them out there, live mm -hmm. line them uh, in those general areas like the Fletchers or up in the uh, Puerto Mingo Dam and you'll catch some big flatheads up Absolutely. there. I uh, remember bass fishing. I mean, it's pre-spawn, mm -hmm. getting to, ready to spawn, depending on what uh, area you're fishing. If you're on the eastern shore, a lot of those ponds and lakes are pretty much, I will say, there's fish spawning already. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you're on this side and some of those deep water reservoirs, they're still pre-spawning in the ledges. So, crawl colors will work the best this time of the year absolutely well depending on the show on the body yeah, of water yeah. and some of the warmer places like the black water mm -hmm. i know i caught a few in accident just fishing where i would for snakeheads mm -hmm. so they're probably sitting on beds in there oh, you yeah. know because i'm pulling them out of six to six inches to a foot of water so they're definitely moving mm -hmm. around a little bit and, and one thing on the catfish too if you're just looking to get out maybe you got your boat in the water already up here just heading out to Padickery point people have been catching tons and tons Typical of blue catfish rock five fish to 15 coming. pound yep exactly that's it five to 15 pound fish seems to be all oh, yeah. there get a chum Some, bag get down to the bag, bottom bag of, a couple bags of li mm -hmm. sit there on that outgoing side when that bait's pouring out of the rivers kind of yep. hard to beat oh yeah and like you said it's it's uh it's hot, big That's fish. Right. You a lot know, of big fish. And you want to have a fun time out there, get the kids out. And it can be easy, too. Oh, yeah. You can just simple. sit back and catch 15-pound fish all day sometimes. Yeah, simple. But can't remember, about that. remember, it's fishing, not catching. Uh -huh. So there's days when it will be on, days when it's going to be off. But so far right now, it's been pretty decent for everybody. Absolutely. Yes, so before sir. we leave you guys, we do have a big sale coming up, one of our biggest mm -hmm. of the year, the Penn event, along with the Rockfish kickoff. That's going to be April 24th and 25th. We're gonna have a whole slew of different things on sale from pen, yeah. line, great deals all over there. And we're even gonna have some custom rigging in the shop Sammy as well. G here is gonna be rigging <laughs> your umbrellas, all right? So make sure you come by for that. But besides that, check out the website for all the details, Absolutely. full details on the website. Stop by, get a flyer, talk to us. Uh, more than welcome to help you out. And I think that's all we got, right? That's all we got today. Thank you guys. Have, have a good one. one.